Hi, my name is Amy Boyd. I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft specialising in AI and machine learning. And firstly, I wanted to thank you for joining us for this AI Tech North event. Um, thank you for having me as a speaker. And in this session, I was thinking about, you know, what, what would I want to say in, in 20 minutes um, about AI to the technical people building it? And so I've titled my talk, Five Areas to Consider During AI Projects, um, A Note to Developers and Data Scientists. So from me to you within the technical community, what are a few things that I want to continue to keep in mind as I build AI and machine learning projects? So let's get started. So number one, area number one is experimenting. Um, I often get asked quite a lot, like, how did you know to use that tool or why did you use that tool? And, and the why always comes from a bit of experimentation. Um, a good example of this is an approach I took to a recent project I worked on around social media data and reality TV data. So I analysed some of the insights that come from uh, one of my favourite programmes uh, called Love Island in the UK. Um, a lot of people say like, oh, you, I'm assuming you just dove straight into the Python code and, and ran with it. Actually, it, it's not the case. There was many different stages of this project, many different technologies used, and really every single one showed me a new learning. For example, top left here, um, the Azure Cognitive Services specific around pre-built AI for text analytics. Now, when I was analysing tweets, if that had just done it for me, I wouldn't need to look after the model. Um, I could very quickly get insights from the data. That would have been a perfect piece of technology to use. For, for this example, it didn't quite get some of the extra information I wanted. Then I dove into the code. I used Jupyter Notebooks. There was no machine learning involved in this in this stage of the project. It was all about exploring the data, understanding the data better, understanding what drove the data and, and therefore my future insights. And then finally, using tooling that allowed me to experiment with different data sets, different parameters when I did get into that machine learning code. So experimentation, I think it's super key to open your mind to new technologies um, and also just use the technology that feels right for the problem. If that means you use one and it's not quite right, hopefully low barrier to entry technologies mean that you can progress forward quickly. Area number two, uh, working with others. So probably considered more of a soft skill um, than, a, than a purely technical skill. Um, but I think there is an interesting piece here around it's not a time um, for knowledge hoarders. It's a time for people who are going to share knowledge in this space. This space is new and it changes all the time. And so understanding that you won't know everything about the subject is okay. I'm very honest when I work with people and I say, hey, like, you know, do bear with me. I've not really worked in this domain before, if it's a specific domain of data or, um, hey, bear with me. Um, ML ops isn't my strongest part of the machine learning life cycle, but I'm here. I'm willing to learn and I'm willing to listen from experts. A couple of great examples and some great resources for you um, Two people on my team, they did a really, really interesting sort of out of the blue project. We were working on um, creating some content around a, a piece of technology called the Azure Machine Learning Designer. Um, and one of the ladies on my team, she was very upfront and she said, you know what, I want to do a forecasting problem. However, I know I'm not a forecasting expert. And so she teamed up with another lady in our team who is an amazing forecasting expert. It didn't mean she asked her to do it. She just asked her to share her knowledge so that she could learn from her quickly, learn from any mistakes that you might make in the space and then progress forward and build her own stance on, on how that would work. So that's kind of example number one. If you want to see the outcome of that content, go to aka.ms slash AIML30 repo uh, and you can find all of the great content uh, that those two uh, ladies on my team created. 
Uh, number two was actually another piece of content for the same um, for the same reason that we were building. We actually built all this for Ignite the Tour. Um, was NL Ops. NL Ops is an interesting one because it, just like any kind of DevOps, it's not all about tooling. There's so much more to it than that. Um, and so what we did on our team is we, we had a team of people who were really into data science and machine learning. But we know we had to pair with someone who was into DevOps or had a lot of insight in that space. And so we actually partnered with a gentleman named Damian Brady, very, very well known in the DevOps space and actually now very well known in the machine learning space. He broke down the understanding of machine learning ops from an ops perspective and we paired with him on the machine learning perspective. And those two things coming together meant that we were able to tell a really great story and accomplish what we wanted to. Again, if you want to find out more about this content, go to aka.msaiml50 repo. In both these examples, working together made the outcome much stronger. It made the outcome from different perspectives. It meant that we were sharing knowledge um, so I highly recommend always, always working with others. Point number three or area number three, um, always learning. I think I just mentioned it there a little bit in the previous point, but um, everything changes so quickly. Building knowledge in this space is all about trying things out, exploring different types of data sets, different domains. Um, and I truly believe that the technology industry is moving at such a fast pace because people in the technology industry make technical communities just like this one and i do believe that i have learned so much from being a part of technical communities from sharing my own insights and knowledge because it's so interesting the conversations that you can have or the feedback that you can get on actually how other people have approached these projects so for always learning i wanted to give you a few examples and there's another amazing community if you're interested in being part and, and taking a look it's called the global ai community and recently we hosted a 30 hour virtual live stream so we had so many amazing sessions um, but one of them really struck a chord with me and um, it was all about using automated machine learning so the idea that you use uh, you pass a piece of tooling, a data set, you tell it or you craft the problem. So is it a classification problem? Is it a regression problem? And from there, it goes and tries lots of different algorithms. This stuff was actually built from research um, where a lot of the time that it takes to build an experiment with different models um, was really, really time consuming for researchers. And so they wanted to automate this process. But interestingly, um, a, a gentleman uh, called Vlad in our global AI community team, he actually applied automated machine learning to a Kaggle competition to see whether it can compete with, with sort of building the model yourself and stuff like that. And I just found it quite incredible. It was a very different perspective. I kind of want to try it myself now. Um, and But he showed us step by step, even down to how do you submit um, a, a competition entry for a Kaggle competition. Um, he did it in real time and described in his lines of code why he chose these different things. It reminded me of a keynote that I attended um, at a Neurips conference. It's quite a, a, a popular machine learning conference. I had a chance to go a few years ago and in the keynote they said, um, a gentleman said, oh, machine learning should not be alchemy. And I, he, he brought up a fantastic visual of kind of canonical and this you know, crazy chemistry going on we still want to be able to understand the why of why we are changing things when we're tweaking different things in machine learning models and this was a really interesting perspective for how he delivered the content how he explained the why he submitted this one and he said oh we're struggling a little bit on this bit maybe we can change this type of approach it was really, really interesting to see how he approached the problem. So um, get involved in technical communities. I also want to talk about something I literally saw this morning. So this is hot off the press um, and I just wanted to make sure I included it. 
I was uh, scanning through Twitter. Uh, I found myself on Twitter and, and LinkedIn and Twitch quite a lot at the moment. And one of the things I found was this amazing um, tweet and also blog post uh, by Mason Kuzak. He's actually a member of the commercial software engineering team at Microsoft. Um, I used to be a part of that team. I do know Mason from um, previous roles. And he just wrote a really um, clear, concise and informative description of an ML ops project that he uh, has done for the last 50 days. And I just found it a really refreshing read, um, also very, very informative as someone myself trying to get more into understanding this part of the machine learning life cycle. Um, so yeah, take a look at that short link there, bit.ly slash Mason ML ops. Um, on just always reading about someone else's perspective, but also always sharing so you are in control because if you do anything in this space, share it, share whatever you can. The approach that you took, the tooling that you use, the documentation that was useful, the examples that you built on or, or that you uh, went through first and then applied your own um, code for production purposes, you can share. You might not be an expert, but not a lot of us are. So if we're not an expert, we can't just go ahead and read a blog post by an expert. We're probably going to get a bit lost. What we want to hear is someone's frank opinion on how they have approached a problem. The downsides to not hopefully walk into yourself. I think it's fascinating. So please share always share what you're learning as well as um, taking these amazing resources from the people in the community are who are sharing themselves so um, if you take give a little it's a bit like open source I guess uh, area number four reporting and um, this is an interesting one I I'm a big fan of business intelligence I'm a big fan of seeing data in a visual format it works for me personally um, I always make a bit of a comment in some of my talks about um, when you're building machine learning models, the output is a probability more often than not. The output is um, how likely something might be to happen. So I make a joke about it being between zero and one. So passing a value like 0 0.89 um, and saying, yeah, it's amazing accuracy or F1 weighted score or it's very confident about this. That works for the data science audience or people who are working in the space. Um, who that doesn't work for is other stakeholders in the business, um, maybe even users that were trying to get to use the technology. I really believe that reporting is so important. And by reporting, I mean telling stories of data. Um, so I, I actually did this with one of the sessions we, we built around tailwind traders i talked about the data science process and one of the final pieces was basically saying how would you report back to a senior leadership team the last thing we would want to do is report back um percentage decimals that, uh, that don't tell us a story about the why or the how um, this was all about support tickets so how could we um help the support ticket team uh, if you want to find out more about the session or watch a quick uh, video, it's at aka.ms slash AI ML 21 repo. Uh, that will take you to the repository where there's some videos that you can watch um, or you can actually walk through the content yourself. By showing the data in a visual format, you automatically build rapport with people be it for them to be able to um, explore the data themselves, find insight themselves, but then also be able to kind of make that choice between saying, am I just taking a percentage decimal or am I truly understanding the why behind why we're applying this type of technology? Um, that hopefully that will, I believe that will build trust with both users as well as um, stakeholders, decision makers, etc. And that quite nicely leads me into my number five area, and that is responsible AI. Um, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I'm any kind of expert. Again, I'm just giving it from what I've understood of this area. Um, responsible AI is an interesting one, or ethics in AI, or interpretability, all these words. It's basically around this idea of we can't 
just assume that black boxing something is is going to be okay because when this stuff goes out into the real world and it starts to make huge impact on the world we need to make sure we're being responsible about the the why are we doing things and also if what we're doing is correct or or are we hopefully not discriminating any kind of uh, particular person or cluster of um, things within the real world within the real world environment um, I recently went to a, an amazing talk that I thought took a quite a different approach to talking about ethics in AI. It felt like quite an actionable approach, uh, in my opinion. Um, so I recently wrote a blog post about it. You can get it at this short link here. So aka.ms slash ethical dash AI dash questions. Um, I, I went to the Microsoft Reactor in London and um, a, an, an amazing gentleman called Michael, he uh, did, a, did this talk and he took us through a real use case. And in this blog post, I basically just um, explained my thinking as he was delivering that session. But what I really loved, was there was these questions that we could ask ourselves that we can just check our projects against. And as someone who is building a project and um, would want to kind of clarify hey and you know maybe asking other people as well not just you as the creator or you and your team but people within the organization and um, possible users you know really asking people what what might be the impact of these types of things because different perspectives always help and then finally in the kind of responsible ai there's a lot coming out around actually how can we look at this from also from a technical point of view? How can we really expand into understanding our data as we're both building these models, but also as we're consuming these models? Um, and I, I, I had a bit of a chance to work on um, sort of evaluating and interpreting models um, a few months ago. And it was really interesting to find this interpret community SDK. We do use it in Azure. Um, we, we leverage it within our Azure machine learning portal, but it was great to kind of go through some of these examples and really kind of understand how we can break down what is happening in our data? How is our model applying itself to our data? Is there any sort of red flags of a certain column is really the, the key indicator? And actually that column could be a little bit skewed, for example. It was incredibly interesting. I highly recommend going and looking at things around interpretable AI or explainability, um, as it's, it's not an easy area. Um, it was quite deeply technical, some of this stuff. My, my brain hurt a little bit afterwards, but it's, um, it's definitely very rewarding and kind of keeps you thinking. So they were my five areas to consider during an AI project. It was a personal note from me to you as a developer or a data scientist. Um, number one, always experiment and try out new technologies, new approaches, um, new research, etc. Uh, number two, working with others. When you might not be the expert, leverage, reach out to people, ask for their help. It's so interesting. Uh, we don't want to all fall into the same pitfalls. Always learning, leveraging these amazing, amazing technical communities. You're part of one right now, so that's amazing. Um, but also kind of leveraging all the insights from other people as well as sharing your own. This is an ask of me to you. Whenever you work on anything, anything that you can share, please do, please just share. Uh, number four, reporting, telling the data story to everyone, not just people within this space, not just people that understand um, the workings of AI and machine learning, but actually to every stakeholder, to every user, being totally transparent about the why of, of you creating this project. And then finally, responsible AI. In order to build these projects and make sure that they make an incredible impact on society. Highly, highly recommend looking into responsible AI. There is so much in that space, but even working from one point and starting to explore has kind of started to work quite well for me. So thank you so much for your time. If you have any other thoughts, if there's other th areas that you would consider as incredibly important in AI, um, please reach out to me um, via Amy Kate Nico on Twitter. Um, I'm thinking about doing a bit more around Twitch if you want to follow me there. But yeah, just keep let's keep the conversation going. Okay, thanks very much.